Well, happy Halloween, everyone. Um, great Tuesday. Uh, getting ready to go to practice. Uh, got a really good Texas team that we're going down to Austin to try to compete with. Um, I think they're playing really well. I know that they uh, had their quarterback injured uh, maybe a week or so ago, but uh, they're playing at a really high level. Uh, they are really physical up front, both sides of the line of scrimmage. Uh, really good skilled kids, uh, both sides as well. I think their special teams is where uh, the first thing I always look at, they just jump out at you as far as their coverage units, um, getting down there with speed, not, not being blocked, and then uh, um, having returners like they do. They, they had a big one against BYU last week, and um, so we've got a uh, big challenge ahead in all three phases this week. Uh, guys are, are confident, excited, coming off another big win uh, on Saturday. Great crowd, uh, great homecoming win. Uh, I think we're getting better in all three phases. There's some things that we need to work on for sure uh, in all three phases. But uh, when you shut a team out and and don't have a lot of touchdown for a, for a handful of quarters, uh, you're doing some really good things on, on defense. And then on offense, um, you know, our ability to run the football has been really good. Our ability to hang on to it. Uh, third down conversions have been good. And then uh, uh, one of the emphasis that we've had all year is red, is red zone success and, and getting touchdowns in the red zone. And I think we were five for five on, on Saturday. Uh, which was um, uh, awesome to see. And so, uh, you know, we're excited about where we're at. We know we've got to play better, and we know that we can play better because it's going to be a big challenge down in Austin. When you look at film in Texas, do they just look different physically? Yeah, I, I, I always think they look good, Fitz. I always think they've got really good talent. I think this might be the best Texas team that I've seen in, in my five years here. Uh, collectively, and when I say that, it's because I don't see uh, any weakness on on either uh, side of the line of scrimmage or in special teams. And I think their their team is playing with a with a ton of confidence. Um, they they believe they're going to be successful. Um, they're very disruptive on both sides of the line of scrimmage. And then uh, the, you know the, a lot of guys we played against. I know there's a couple that are gone, but a lot of guys we played against within their skill set tight ends and, and wide receivers, uh, and then a lot of the defensive guys returned from last year as well. They're so physical across the lines, and that's been an area that you guys have excelled at the last three weeks or so. Um, how big of a challenge is yeah, that? Yeah, it's going to be a huge challenge for us, uh, one that we have to be able to accept. We, we've, we've got to do what we do. We can't uh, reinvent the wheel and say, you know, it's going to be hard to move these guys up front, no question about it. But we can't say, hey, we're going to abandon what we've done and try to gimmick different things to try to uh, be successful, especially on offense. Um, that's not us. Um, we have to be able to effectively run the football. Uh, is that with quarterbacks? Is that with wide receivers on jets? Is it with running backs? Is it gap scheme, zone scheme? Um, we've got to be efficient throwing the football. Um, and then the biggest thing that we've had some success with the last few weeks is staying on the field. You know, we can't – we've been, whatever, 10 of 13 and 10 of 14 the last couple of weeks. We can't afford to be 3 of 13 and 3 of 14 or it's going to be a long day for us. Okay, finally for me, um, how good has Avery Johnson's emergence been for Will Howard? Uh, I think it's been good for Will. It's been good for our whole team. Um, I, I'm excited to see how Avery's grown throughout this season. Um, I, I think it's helped Will bounce things, ideas off of. Uh, I, I told you guys on, on Saturday, I think w I've seen Will play a lot of really good football here. Uh, and I saw him play, I thought, one of the most complete games he's played now. He won a Big 12 championship, played really good in that game. But I just thought from start to finish, just – being in control, being in command, having confidence, uh, being on point, throwing the football, running the ball with authority. I thought he played one of his best games here. With one quarterback against Tech, it was split right down the middle against TCU, yep. and then the other one the last week against Houston. Yep. As a defensive coach, how tough is that to prepare for when you probably don't know what's coming? Yeah, I, I as I look at it, uh, I think it's difficult to prepare for, but in the same respect, I don't know if our offense changes. Um, maybe the emphasis of some of our plays poten potentially change, uh, but uh, it's not like we're going away from what we do with, with our run game, running some gap scheme and zone scheme. I think um, two things that have helped us. One, Will is really running the ball 
well. Uh, and Avery's uh, made some big time throws, which helps maybe throw off maybe what people think we're going to do. I thought um, Avery made as good a play uh, as I've seen a, a quarterback, especially a young young guy make when he found Swanson um, on a third down where it looked like he could tuck it and run and kept his eyes downfield. That's hard to do, and that was a big-time play um, that I know he's going to grow and, and learn from and, and um, see that and realize uh, what an impactful play that was. But um, both guys have a really good skill set, and both guys um, can, t can continue to help lead our offense. I know it's probably multiple things, but is there something you attribute this defensive improvement to? Uh, it is multiple things. We're playing team defense the last handful of weeks, uh, and uh, you know we're matching the the secondary with uh, our front seven or front eight as far as how we're playing um, and being on the same page. We're, we're not giving up as many explosive plays. We're tackling better across the board. Um, we've simplified some things uh, on uh, in the secondary, especially. Uh, Kobe Savage and VJ Payne are playing at a high level. Spe being that we changed their position, I think that really benefited both guys. Um, the emergence of Will Lee helped us last week uh, to have another corner out there that can do some things. But this is going to be a big-time challenge this week because it's not like you're not going to make Texas one-dimensional. We've been able to make a few teams one-dimensional. Um, we're not going to be able to do that. So we have to be really good uh, at being able to control some of the run game, and we absolutely have to take away their shot plays because um, they're extremely talented at the receiver and tight end position, and they get, they're getting behind everybody. So we have to do a great job of keeping the the plays in front of us and making some plays on the football uh, and then trying to eliminate maybe the explosive run. They're going to get some runs on us. We just got to be able to eliminate the explosive ones. Yeah, Coach, you've touched on this, but strength on strength, how vital is it to uh, for your run game to be able to get get yards yeah. when Texas knows you're going to run it? It's, it's huge, and uh, it, it sets up everything else, whether that's um, third down and manageable and not third and long. Uh, to time of possession, to getting the play count up, to hopefully keeping their offense on the sideline. Um, we can't go into this game thinking that we're going to rush for 350 yards, but we can't go into this game uh, thinking that we're going to throw it 55 times because we can't run the football. That's the challenge uh, for our offense and for Coach Klein and the staff is find ways to get us into second and five and second and four and not be in second and 10 uh, and third and eight all day because then um, they really have a big advantage. We have to have the element of we can run the football uh, on third down um, so that um, you know we can maybe keep them a little bit off balance um, because it, it is. I mean, this, these guys at all three levels have uh, – Sunday level football guys that uh, it's going to be a big big task force. And dating back to the 2022 opener with Taylor Portier, just how far have you seen him come from where yeah, he was at that uh, time? He's he's I think playing well, but he's finally um, I think realizing okay, I'm okay. Uh, I, I'm of some of the rustiness of the last missing the last two years is off of him. He's made some mistakes, but he continues to to make strides and get better and better um, movement wise, uh, communication wise, um, you know, physical wise of knocking people off the ball. His challenge has been to keep his weight up um, because. You know, he hasn't played football in two years, and he's taking care of his body. Uh, it's been a big lift for us to have uh, uh, him playing as amount of snaps he, as he has, as well as the Carver-Willis-Christian Duffy rotations really helped our offensive line. And how much has Klanderman improved the defense through playing two player strengths? Um, uh, it's something we always look to try to do. Uh, are, are we a zone team? Are we a man team? Um, you know, our, our, what are we playing? How are we playing our defensive ends? I think our defensive staff collectively has done a really good job uh, of changing the looks up and not giving the same picture to specific sets and, and uh, uh, specific formations and, and putting Khalid in position to be successful, U utilizing Mott and, and, and stuff and, and Matlock uh, in, in a successful way. Um, 
getting Jake Clifton back healthy and having four linebackers rotate in really well, using Toby like we've used him um, in certain situations. And, uh, you know, we're still thin at the safety spot, but we're getting some mileage out of some guys. But uh, uh, they're doing a really nice job. And the other thing, guys, that's really helped us is we, the last two weeks especially, because our offense has been so dominant, you know, Austin Moore and Des Purnell are playing 50 or less plays, which is keeping those guys fresh. Texas leads the conference in rushing defense. From your perspective, just what makes them so good in that area? Uh, just the, their front four. Uh, the defensive tackles are very disruptive. The defensive ends uh, are long, uh, athletic, get off blocks. Uh, their linebackers hit things down the hill. They run through, you know. We can target guys and maybe think we know who's going to get to uh, a backer, a safety, whatever it may be. It's sustaining the blocks, and that's where we're going to have to strain really well on Saturday um, and hold blocks. And that's a sign of a terrific run defense that they know you have to sustain the blocks, and they're not they're going to allow it. They do a great job with block destruction. They do a great job of keeping separation and not allowing you into their bodies, and and then they just know their fits. I mean, that's the thing that we've done a really good job on defense of knowing our fits, knowing you know who's in each gap, knowing where I can miss, knowing where my help's coming from. That's something that uh, you can tell uh, this defense is really experienced. Their staff's done a great job. I think they got a tremendous uh, staff uh, on both sides of the ball, but uh, they're really well coached, and the guys are playing at a high level. When you've gone back and watched replays of the previous two games, um, what stood out to you most about your own offensive line and uh, kind of how physically they played up front? Um, for starters, their communication uh, has been really good against a lot of different looks that we've seen. I take last week as an example. Um, Houston played a three down that they played against Texas, but they really hadn't played much of the year. So we practiced probably more against four down, but threw some three down in. And then when we found out what the game was going to be like and how they were going to try to defend us, you take a bunch of older offensive linemen that can communicate and, and talk to Riles on the sideline and get things ironed out of here's some plays we think can help us. Here's some, here's some calls that we can use to – to make sure that we can, um, you know, double uh, double team and get to the back or whatever it may be, um, you know, those guys are playing at a really high level, um, and it starts with their communication and their preparation. Those guys watch film; they they know tendencies, they know techniques, uh, and they've played a lot of football with each other. Look at the Big 12 standings right now and see so many teams tied there with one loss with you guys, Texas, everybody else. Does it surprise you that there's so much parity in the league right now? No, it it, it doesn't. Um, somebody asked me that uh, uh, earlier today. It doesn't. I, I think, you know, we we never know. We can predict how it's going to start or, you know, the preseason things of who should be where. You got to play these games, and you got to see who's developed, and you got to see um, the teams that maybe either playing some freshmen, playing some newer players, um, and and how they fit into each team system. And um, it, it's fun to see that, uh, um, for the most part, the games that we have in November are really meaningful games against uh, really good teams because that's what we always strive for here: is to play games in November that matter. And um, we've been fortunate. We've been able to do that the last couple of years and, and, and this year as well, that uh, um, these games are going to have an impact, whether it's uh, on the standings, our ability to, to continue on and have a chance to play in December uh, in, at uh, AT&T, or if nothing else, continue to, to improve our spot in, in bowl prep. How much was uh – just getting one game of film on, on Malik Murphy helpful as far as kind of preparing? Um, you know, you'd like to have more. He'd like to have a, a bigger sample size for sure. Uh, I, I think they did some things with him to try to get him going early uh, in, in throwing the football. Um, but as as you dive into the last couple years of their film, um, they're going to do what they do because they do it really, really well. And uh, he's been in that system now for a while. And – uh, they have a lot of confidence in him, and you can see that. He's got tremendous, tremendous arm talent, and uh, uh, I think he sees the field well. I think he's got patience in the pocket, um, and let me 
I said, when you can make all the throws and have patience in the pocket, um, you're, you're really dangerous. Plus, he's got tremendous guys to, to either throw the ball to or hand the ball to. But uh, I would love to have a, another game or two on him, but uh, that's what we have. And then you guys have faced <clears throat> five of the top 15 rushers just in terms of total rushing yards. So far this season, you'll get another one. And, and Brooks, yeah, it, d- is that experience helpful? I mean, I know each one's different. Each one has a different system, but yeah, yeah, and, and you're right. I, I think everybody's a little bit different. Um, you know, it, it's it's sometimes the schemes of what people are doing. I, I think Texas does a tremendous job. They're uh, probably similar to us in in the fact that you better not just defend zone scheme, but you better defend gap scheme uh, in the run game as well. They do a great job with, similar to us, with motions and trying to take people's eyes away, trying to lose linebackers' eyes with uh, jet motions and orbit motions, and then they still have that ability to pitch it out there and have an extension of their run game by throwing smokes and bubbles to get with really talented guys. They hurt us that respect last year because we put so many people uh, in, in the box trying to, to, to stop the run game that uh, we gave up. You know, too many 8, 9, 10, 12, 14-yard um, throws that are, that are, in essence, extensions of the run game with bubbles and smokes. And so, um, but they do a good job of that with all their um, motions and stuff that uh, we've got to have our eyes right. And then with the decision to, to swap Kobe and BJ a couple of weeks ago, yep. can, you, can you go into a little bit more kind of what, what went into to making that decision and then, and then how – how has that? How has it shown on the field that yeah. it has it's worked out so well? Well, Coach Clarman does such a great job of explaining all three safety spots to the guys all the time, and he meets with you know all three safety spots so they all know each other's job for the most part and and know the calls and and it's there's a ton of continuity. Um, VJ played a bunch of strong safety last year, so it wasn't foreign to him to move outside. Kobe missed most of spring ball with his injury, but we put him at the spot he's playing through spring ball, through all the walkthroughs, so it wasn't uh, totally foreign to those guys. And um, it was just it was collective effort by us, myself, and the defensive staff to say, hey, let's make this switch um, uh, for a variety of reasons. But uh, um, one, to make sure that uh, we get the most out of both guys, and, and I think um, both guys have um, – really responded well to that change and and yeah it took a couple games for them to get comfortable but uh now i think they're both playing really good football i believe heading into this game it's your first opponent that's ranked in the top 25 but based on where your team is at right now how well you're playing having the biggest challenge of the season so far is this the right time to have this kind of game yeah i don't know if there's a right time wrong time to have any of these these games i don't pay attention to rankings and stuff I, I really don't um I, I know this our backs were against the wall um when we left uh Stillwater three weeks ago and uh, we challenged the guys more importantly the the guys challenged each other um that we can play uh, much better football than than we had been um and for us to um, to right the ship, so to speak, or to leave a legacy for what the 2023 team has a chance to be. Um, we need to, to improve uh, and get our focus, get our mentality, get our edge back, all those things. And I just can't tell you how happy I am for the players, especially those seniors, that they've responded the way they, they have. And it really started when we got down in the third quarter against Texas Tech and uh, nobody flinched. Um, Texas Tech, I still think, is a really good football team, and uh, especially at home. And we were uh, ahead and then down in that third quarter. And from that time on, I could see the confidence grow with the guys and the belief grow with, with the guys, and, and that we've kind of carried that over since then. So I, I don't know the timing of games. You just know the schedule, and this happens to be uh, November football, and it's a pretty big game. Yeah, respond to success just like you respond to adversity. You know, and, and we hit on it last week a bunch, especially when we saw the forecast, you know, um, that, uh, hey, guys, it's going to be 75 Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, get a little cooler on Friday and then be uh, downright cold on Saturday for at least for the early morning game that we've got to 
we got to block out the fact that there's elements out there and and respond to the positive and and I, I think our guys I, I wasn't concerned because we had a really good Friday uh, and people talk about this all the time of what's a really good Friday well I see it as are we making any mental mistakes in our walkthroughs are the guys locked in and then we had a, a walk through early, early Saturday morning, um, and the guys were razor sharp on both sides. So I thought we would play really good football, but you still have to have that mentality when you go out there. And and uh, I credit Coach True, our strength coach, and his staff, uh, as well as all of our sports staff, of getting the guys' minds and bodies right for um, you know this stretch that we're going in. Yeah. He and I talk uh, all the time about it, but uh, I trust him. And um, he's in the room with them all the time. He's at practice. I float back and forth. I'm more with the defense during the day. Uh, at practice, I float back and forth. I do meet with the quarterbacks early, like uh, I will when I leave here, to talk about the things that I see from a defensive perspective. But, um, you know, I love Colin Klein. I got tons of respect for him. I trust him. He is always going to bounce things off of me. Um, and I'm going to bounce things off of him. Uh, but he's got a great pulse in that room. Uh, as far as Brooks, what makes him so tough? It seems like they just have somebody like that every they, year. Every, yeah, and they've got more behind him. Um, so uh, I think he's got great contact balance for starters. Um, he runs through arm tackles. He's got really good vision. And uh, let's be honest, they're really good up front. You know, uh, it's one of the reasons that DJ and Treshawn run the ball well. Um, that we're really good up front, and that's where it starts. And I think any back would tell you, um, I can't make them all miss or break all the tackles. I've got to be have some guys up front, and they've got a really good offensive line as well. Brent, uh, Christian Duffy made his first start, I yep. think, last week. Has it taken him a while to to get, I don't know, stamina yeah, or yeah, just Yeah, I think so. Off, yeah. Um, Duff's, we kind of eased him back into some things. And, you know, with the injury that he suffered, we didn't think he was going to be a 75 play game guy this whole year. We just, and, and so that's why the emergence of Carver was so important so that we can keep a fresh Christian Duffy out there for, I don't know if it was 40 or 48 or 50 snaps last week. And maybe there's a game where it's 35. Um, but uh, the emergence of Carver Willis has really helped uh, Duff be able to um, not have to play 70, 80 plays and be able to split those snaps. And I think it's made them both better. What can you say about the season that Kobe's having? But Kobe Savage? Yeah. Um, it, it, he's had a really good season. I think he's he's finally starting to play the way he knows he can play. It's hard coming off the injury that he did and miss all the spring ball and, and miss some of the summer stuff. Um, and... Uh, you know, I know he's got high, high expectations of himself, and uh, I finally see him feeling comfortable, not just the position move, but with his body. And, um, you know, we're, we still got a lot of football left, and uh, I thought Kobe's played really well the last handful of weeks, and I still see his best football this year in front of him. He's a guy from Paris, Texas. He goes to Tyler Junior College, yep. isn't heavily recruited. You, oh, he's got a chip on his shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> he talks about it a lot. He's got a chip on his shoulder, and uh, that's what you love about Kobe. And he is, I love the, that story about him, but more importantly, how he shares that story with a lot of guys on the team uh, that, uh, you know, you better have a chip on your shoulder and you better have an edge. And, and when I talk about that as a collective team of, hey, man, we got to play with an edge and we've got to play with a chip on our shoulder. we got to play with that underdog mentality. He's a guy that's lived it. And, and he's a guy that never wants anybody to feel sorry for themselves or never wants anybody to feel like they've arrived because uh, he plays every day like this is his last day of football. A couple questions. First, with Worthy and Mitchell, athletically it's obvious, but what else about how they play separates them from a lot of guys? I, well, they've got experience for starters, and um, they utilize those guys so well and so un unique in, in whether it's extended splits, nasty splits, motions, um, all the different uh, formations that they get into. Uh, and sometimes they're the best clear-out guys there are.
because they're setting something up, whether it's for the tight end or for a running back or um, just pulling people out of the run fit because of their uh, ability to get downfield. And, uh, um, you know, and then, you know, Worthy has the huge punt return last week that we've got to do a phenomenal job with uh, our protection for starters because they've blocked punts this year and then being able to stack guys, not get blocked at the line of scrimmage, which is a challenge. Um, Jack's got to punt the ball really well, and we've got to keep the ball inside in front, in front and try to corral him. After Mizzou and Stillwater, you referenced it, and then maybe turn the corner a bit at Lubbock, but now you're playing in front of 100,000. Is the environment thing, are you – past being concerned about that or no? oh no you're never you're never past it you're working it all the time uh and you know Mondays we typically don't have a lot of noise at practice because it's a lot of new stuff in the game plan um Colin will start putting some of that stuff in today and then we'll have a heavy day of it Wednesday and Thursday because um it, it's going to be really loud down there I, I know that and and Colin knows it and Will knows it the offense knows it and we'll We'll crank it up in the indoor quite a bit here in these next few days so that we can work a, a number of different uh, snap counts and cadences because it's a big advantage when uh, um, the defense can see that ball and roll and it's hard to you know get people on double cadences and stuff because of the inflection of voices you can't hear and, and so it's a it's definitely something that concerns us concerns me and we're going to work on it every day this week.